In the first episode, six children from different backgrounds who all live in Britain arrived in the lakes to spend the weekend together, camping at a farm. This trip offers them the opportunity to mix with others from different backgrounds and discover what it means to be British. But getting along is not going to be easy. Sometimes when I hear people, black and white, saying, talking about terrorists, I sometimes I think they're aiming at me because of my colour and background. I wouldn't be mates with an Asian in Bradford because people around me would take the mick out of me and him. For these children, Britain is a place of difference and division. What will happen when they spend the weekend together on the camping trip in the lakes? They just come and make you feel uncomfortable? A little bit. Do you think Niall's representation of you is accurate? People just don't want a mix. It's like a war. Are you going to be able to cope with that? Helping them is historian Dr Nick Barrett. There's quite a lot of different ideas coming from all of you about what you think it means to be British. In the previous episode, the children arrived at the farm at night and quickly formed alliances with one another. Niall's a joker. <laughs> He's like one of the people that I find I talk to. They've all been really funny and they're really good friends. Some, however, remained on the outskirts. We've moved so we can be away from the boys because they're stinky, so we come here to be ourselves. Coming up, the children will camp and cook together, as well as complete activities, exploring what it means to be British. It's the morning after the children's arrival, and as the girls predicted, it was a long night for the boys. Last night, Everyone was awake, no one could get to sleep. I was too excited to go to sleep. Niall was keeping us up all night because he was reading magazines and shining the light. Before I gave me off, I thought I wouldn't be able to go to sleep because I have sleeping problems. But it was quite easy until the sheep started talking to each other and everyone were talking in the room, which were a bit distracting, but it's all right, I got to sleep anyway. Were you not talking though, Niall? No, I won't. I was uh, playing on DS. After breakfast, as the children explore the farm, they start to get to know each other. It soon becomes clear, however, that the camp is divided. It's girls versus boys. This is the axe, you know, if I want to kill any girls. Why girls? I don't know. It just, you know, so. He's a rapper. <laughs> Um, what? Uh, it's rapist, not raper. Sure, I knew that. I just forgot. Yeah. You sure you did? That's what they all say. Imagine jumping from the top of that. You're not gonna live for, are you? I wanna walk up there today. Would you guys all choose to go on holidays together? If I had a chance to take someone on a holiday, I'd take these for I'd leave them. They're boring. <laughs> we don't talk. Yeah. <laughs> they don't talk, do they? Got <laughs> The girls are sensible, but they're not boring. They're not silly like us. Yeah, they are. They don't talk. Be quiet. Yeah, but how do you know that they don't talk? Like Why do you talk to them? We've been with them for about six hours, and they answered a word. It's not that we're boring. It's that we get shy sometimes when we see people new and stuff. There's a sheep. Meh. What's constipated? <laughs> <laughs> How do you know what a constipated sheep looks like? For some of these children, this is the first time they've had an opportunity to mix with others from different backgrounds. And it's also the first time they've been on a farm. We're not going to eat them for our dinner then? No. With some herbs. Some chilies. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you a joke. Horse walks into a bar. Farmer says, why the long face? How often do you collect the wool? Does it hurt? No. Yeah. 
A chance to show off their football skills brings the children together and it seems it's something they're all interested in. You can start off doing kick ups by holding it in your hand, like this. Well, maybe not all of them. For Nal and Nabil, playing like this would not be possible in their everyday lives. We're going to go to areas in Keatley, which is a part of Bradford, uh, to show where Nabil. Uh, lives. Uh, there is particular areas in Keithley where it's predominantly Asian and predominantly white. This area is uh, called Braithwaite. It's totally, almost totally white area and it's segregated from the, the next catchment area we're going to go into, which is High Field. I would like to mix with the white people. It's just that when I go to white areas, I don't feel safe because there are people out there who are racist and, and I won't be feeling safe there. This is the area where Nabil uh, lives in. And sometimes what happens is that the uh, white community would perceive this as a no-go area for them. Uh, and uh, if, they, if we went to Braithwaite, it would be probably no-go area for uh, Asians. It's probably misunderstanding on both uh, communities. Since 9-11, uh, I feel the Muslim community has come under a lot of pressure. Uh, I feel that they're being persecuted. Uh, as a whole community when there's a few individuals who do wrong. Most of my friends are English in this area because it's a white area in Bradford. My school's 80% white and 20% uh, is Asian and I hang around with the white people. I don't think I'd get on with an Asian kid because they've got different coloured skin, the families are different and they've got a different accent to me which would be weird speaking to someone because I may not understand a lot of things they're saying. What did you do? <laughs> 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 so how many jeans do you have up your bum? <laughs> <laughs> Right, we're going to do a drawing exercise, and the aim of this is to explore identity, how we look at each other and how we see each other. And to do that, we're not going to draw each other's faces, but draw the things that we think the person opposite you represents. OK, guys, I think that's just about time's up, so please stop drawing. Yeah, I know, it's disappointing. You're really getting into that, aren't you? OK, now let's start with you. Right, this is your impression of Nabil. What's this a drawing of? I think he's from Pakistan, so the colour of his skin and his voice. And I think he's British born. How about this one here? Um, curry, because that's what most... Well, it just like the traditional food for Pakistan, isn't it? Do you think Nile's representation of you is accurate? Or is there anything you'd change about it? If I didn't think to change, I would change the curry, because I don't eat curry. And what about the idea that Nile picked up on the fact that you were from Pakistan by your voice? Mm, I know people have different ways of talking, and I had a different way to him. So, Nabil, this is your representation of Nile. OK. First of all, you've drawn a flag. What's this for? I think he's English because he's got light skin and he talks like an English person. A sausage because he's a non-vegetarian and most non-vegetarians eat sausages and stuff like that. And would you eat this? No, because I'm a Muslim. Uh, the English is right. The sausage is right. I don't like sausage. 
Now, you were drawing about Mariana, weren't you? Yeah. OK, what's this a picture of? Somewhere hot. Somewhere hot. Why do you think that? Because of her skin colour. I think she's from somewhere exotic. Spain, somewhere like that. My home country is tropical and really hot, but it's not Spain. Where is it? It's Cyprus. OK, well, let's see what you think of Shakwa. What does this one represent? He lives in North London, because he told me. My mum's Jamaican and my dad's Tanzanian, but I live in North London, North West London. So you consider yourself as being from London, or do you consider yourself as being from somewhere else? I consider myself from being from somewhere else, but being British-born. OK, Zakina, let's see what you think about Anesu. Let's have a look. I think he's from Africa because of his skin colour. So where do you consider yourself to be mainly from? Uh, Zimbabwe. Not Britain? Well, a bit. A bit? What yeah. sort of a bit? Can you explain what, why you feel slightly British? Um, because like, I live in here, but I think I'm more of an African because I, I got born there. Well, Sakina, it sounds like you've done a very good job of working out Anesu. Let's see what he thinks of you. OK, Anesu, let's have a look at your drawing. You've got two words there. What are they? Um, that's Portugal, but I can't put it in. And England, because she lives in England. Where do you consider home? Portugal. Why don't you feel British for that association with being in Britain? Because I don't have a passport, a British passport. I, I haven't lived, I haven't been, like, here uh, for five or ten years, so... I can't say that I'm British or what. It might take a bit of time and then you might start to feel a bit British. Yeah. And Anessa, is that similar for you as well? Yes. So for you, it's where you live and how long you live there. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And yet for you, it's something very different. It's about heritage and yeah. background. And how would you describe someone who is British? Um, someone with white skin. Uh, as speaks English and has a British accent. So, Nabil, how do you feel about that? I mean, Nas basically saying that to be British you have to be white. Is that something you agree with? No, I disagree. You don't have to be white. You consider yourself British? Yeah. You don't have to be white and have an accent. You just need to be born in uh, England or Britain or whatever. Having gained insight into their differences and their differing views on what it means to be British, in the final episode, their values will be tested as they set up camp and share tents together for the night. What the muffin? Hey, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? With the question of Britishness culminating in a passionate campfire debate. I understand people's backgrounds, but I still probably wouldn't hang around with an Asian. It's like a war.